COVID-19 has led to lots of new ways of doing things, and football is no exception to that. Crystal Palace vs Burnley is another first for me, the first football match that I have watched via Twitch.tv. Amazon Prime technically had the rights for this one, and were giving away for free, as long as you had a regular Amazon account, but when trying to log in as it approached kickoff, I was unable to sign in. I assume that Amazon servers are not normally expecting such an influx of viewers for their live streams. Thankfully, the primarily video game streaming platform Twitch, which is owned by Amazon, came to my rescue. Twitch is far more suited to hosting live streams with large audiences than Prime Video would be, and so that was my destination for the night. I was watching the game with my family, however, so full screen viewing was the order of the day, so I didn't get a chance to see what sort of shenanigans was going on in the infamous Twitch chat. As Palace fans, we knew coming into this game that it was likely to be a tight one. Only goal difference separated these two sides, with three points being enough to take the winner, Burnley, above Arsenal and Sheffield United, and level on points with seven place Tottenham, who have a game in hand. Despite that, in nine Premier League meetings between these two sides, there has only been one draw. Palace started reasonably well, hot out the blocks, closing down Burnley well, and pressing them high up the field, feeling more intense and ready for the game than I was expecting. Palace were doing well in snuffing out the beginnings of Burnley's attacks. I'm still very new to watching games in this no-crowd era, and in the previous games I've watched via the BBC, I've always opted for the no-fake crowd noise option, but decided to leave as it was today, and it made me think that maybe in the future, depending on how much longer this era continues, the person who's sound designing the games and doing the crowd noise might become part of the pre-match notes. Like, in addition to knowing who the referee, commentators and pundits are, we also know the name of the sound designer and director of crowd noise. And we can all have discussions about which sound director is our favourite and who has a specialism for each team. Maybe something for the future. But interesting to think about. There's a scary goal line scramble early on in the match as a Burnley corner bounces off Van Arnholt, who's trying to clear it, and then hits Dan in the face, sending the ball somewhat goal-bound in a moment more resembling pinball than football, before Joel Ward tries to clear out, but it meets a Burnley player, who finally sends it over. Luca loses control of the ball in Burnley's half, and Dwight McNeil pounces on it and drives forward before shooting from just outside the Palace area, but Vicente Guaita is able to get his body behind it for a reasonable save. During the now-mandated drinks break section, there are people going around and spraying what I assume to be disinfectant on the goalposts and corner flags, which is maybe a sign of the new era that we're living in. Burnley seemed to be having the majority of the possession in the first half, although this would turn around by the end of the game, with a 58-42 split in Palace's favour overall. Burnley are obviously well drilled defensively, meaning they keep Palace at bay really well all the way through the match, forcing Palace into shots from long range which Pope can easily deal with, or forcing them to work really hard for their opportunities. A great cross deep from Ward to MacArthur at the back post is maybe Palace's best chance of the match, but making one of the smallest men on the pitch, the one to try and score a headed goal, is never going to go especially well, and the Burnley defender gets the slightest touch to it to cause MacArthur to miss as half-time approaches. There's a possible VAR call early in the second half, as John Nayu seems to elbow a Burnley player with about 48 minutes gone, but VAR rules no violent conduct and no card, which I agree with. At about 55 minutes, the game opens up with some more space available, with Palace attacking down the left through Zaha and Andrus Townsend, but Burnley soon return the favour, breaking through Vidra. Burnley score their goal from a deep free kick swung into the area, with Ben Mee capitalising on it with a diving header, his first goal since January 2017. Guaita does get a hand to it, but is only able to push it onto the post as Burnley take the 1-0 lead. I'm reluctant to criticise Guaita here, because while he is arguably at fault for the goal, and should be saving this, he has, in his other performances, won so many other points that I'm more willing to let it go. Palace keep the pressure on, but Burnley are so good defensively that nothing can come from it, forcing the likes of Andros to try long-range shots. We just can't break down the solid Burnley defence, and not creative enough to unlock them and get an equaliser. Palace get lots of corners as a result of this pressure, but are not able to turn them into anything. Burnley just too disciplined, and Palace just too poor at this stage. The story is one that Palace are familiar with, a defeat at home, with goals hard to come by, and lacking the creativity to make something out of nothing. Palace play Leicester away next, on the 4th of July, while Burnley are at home to Sheffield United on the 5th. This episode was written and produced by me, Stephen Lemontree. Our outro music is Simplicity by Macrofore Music. If you ever want to contact us, you can do so on Instagram and Twitter at NevetsLT or email 
nevetslt at gmail.com. That's N-E-V-E-T-S-L-T. Life is singing Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi, like your life depends on it. We'll see you next week. Thank you.